All right, I'm going to show you how I organize my four drawer US General tool cart. I've used the lid here for quite a few things. I don't shut it and lock it. This is a home box. So I use the lid with a whole lot of magnetic stuff on it. This frees up like a drawer and a half. You get so much fast grab stuff just not stuck in a drawer. Uh, and then it's not laying down here either. And you can see I use this kind of, well, there's no like sockets or anything. Like a lot of people use socket rails in here. And this whole thing is just filled up with a ton of sockets. I use this more like a work area, uh, depending on what I'm working on. Uh, 10 minutes ago, there were wrenches everywhere in here. I cleaned it up a little bit for this video, but I'm not afraid to use this area as a work area and this area as a work area. And I like the drawers and this lid to be the majority of where things are stored. So top left here, and you know, I bought this box off of a uh, Coast Guard uh, who was also a Marine. I don't take credit for the stickers, uh, but I do I appreciate their service, okay? And I'm going to keep the stickers on there for now. Uh, all right, so at the top here, I've got this cobalt magnetic socket tray that I use for my Milwaukee Fastback knives. Uh, I like to have a utility knife. I really like Milwaukee's Fastback knives. I like to keep them up there for anything that I'm cutting so I don't have to go in a box for them. I stick them right on that magnetic rail and they're real easy to get to. And I'll put links down below in the description to all the products that I talk about. So if you're interested, hit the link, go down to the Amazon and uh, you can just get them shipped straight to your house. So back up to the top left here, this is my Fujia pliers. This is a two-piece two set. These are the bent nose. These are tweezer nose pliers. They're very, very thin at the top. And I really like these. Uh, they're a great quality tool. Fujia is a Japanese brand and these just feel like a really quality small plier they're very thin very thin at the top they can get into some really small places that's why i keep those right up there this is a magnetic pickup tool that's just sitting there we all have probably seen these uh telescoping magnetic pickup tools this here is a really cool product that i use all the time it is a locking extension so what it does is it will lock the socket onto there and it won't let go. You can jiggle it like crazy and it won't let go. I'll show you, I'll show you in just a second. All right, I'll show you how this works. So in order to get the socket on there, you have to pull the little collar down, slide it on, and that locks the socket on there and that won't come off. So when you're doing crazy work and you bump the sockets or stuff like that, or if you got a one that's kind of wiggly, uh, it won't come off, which is really nice. And then if you got to get it off, you pull the collar and just kind of flick it like that. Really like those, that's from Gear Wrench. Uh, and this here is one of my favorite set of pliers. I use these daily on random tasks. This here is the Nipax Twin Grips. They work a lot like a slip joint, uh, but they have a little bit different grooving in there to grab onto things. You see they've got a little hole at the top too, and then a hole at the tip. So you can use them kind of like an extraction plier. If you've heard of van pliers before, maybe that's a similar uh, concept up top that you've heard of before. Uh, those are one of my favorite tools in the, in the entire garage. And then this is the Nibex version of diagonal cutters. I used these the other day to cut some cotter pins. I've used them to cut fishing hooks. They work great. Love these. And that's why they live right up there because you're probably always going to be cutting something. Another reason why I always have these up here too. These are another Japanese brand, Sunuda. Sunoda. Sunuda. If somebody uh, speaks Japanese and knows how to properly pronounce that. Uh, let me know. These are real nice. These are their sprung version of needle nose pliers. I use these quite a bit, and I would put these up there on quality with this brand right here. Some people might call me out on that, but I tell you what, and honestly, for the cost, these are well worth looking into. Uh, Sunuda and Fujia pliers. Not going to break the bank, but the quality is way better than what you find at some big box stores, in my opinion. All right, these are OEM tools, two of the ones that I like the most of the pick set that I have. This is their blunt nose picks so that you don't stab yourself when you slip or if you're using it on something that you don't want to poke a hole in, uh, you get these blunt nose ones. And that's why they live right there. I find myself using those more than the pointed style. This is one of my most used tools in the entire garage for almost everything I need light. I love this thing because you can stand it up straight. You can stand it on its side or lay it down, I guess you'd say, and still tilt that. It works great. It's magnetic. It's got two different lights on it or two different modes on it, bright and not as bright. That's a tool that I use every single day. Moving on, this is just a little hook right here that is a magnetic hook that I put the keys on for the cars that I'm working on. Uh, it's a very handy little spot to have them, so I never lose them. This is another cobalt magnetic tray that I've got magnetic sockets in. This is a Sunex or Sunex, I don't know the pronunciation there, 
magnetic sockets. So these are great when you're running a ton of hard to reach spots. I painted my 10 mil red at the top, so I kind of know where that one is and I can work my way either way, knowing which direction, which out without having to check each socket, I know which size they are. Everything is figure outable. That's the motto in here. Uh, this is another Milwaukee light. I like this one. It's powered by regular disposable batteries. It's got a couple magnets on it. I like this one. Haven't used it a ton since I got that because this just puts out so much more light. On this magnetic plates, <coughs> I should cover that uh, a couple different brands make these, but this Craftsman ones, they are very powerful, uh, not overpowering, but they can hold most anything you need in any direction. And they've done me great. Uh, they seriously free me up tons of space. I've got my stealth key. Uh, that's a lug nut key right there to a Dodge Stealth. And I've got these little bits over here. I really, really like these Bosch One Piece bits especially for the t25 size or the t bits on the top uh what i really like is that they are thinner here so you get more visual on what you're screwing or unscrewing and if you compare it to the dewalt you can see where there's maybe a little bit more clearance to see things and so i got that one in a in that size there and i also got the long one i prefer the mid size right here uh these are bits to my vessel screwdriver i'll show you that it's down in the rail there so this just pops right off and you can interchange those bits depending on which size you want. So I put the interchangeable sizes right there because the screwdriver lives really close. Now this is just a quarter inch adapter for like an uh, impact driver. I'd put that on the impact driver. And now I got a way to run a quarter inch socket. This is a drill bit adapter. This is another drill bit adapter extension. Another one. This is one of my snap-on screwdrivers. I use this more like a pry bar. And I use this one more like a bigger pry bar. All right, another big snap on one. And then I use and then I use this screwdriver down here for pretty much all the weird dirty gross work that I don't want my snap-ons touching. This is just some quick bits here I let live right there in case I'm working on something with a drill. Uh, this is oh I already went over those Fuji pliers. These are one of my daily users as well. These are flush cuts and what they do, another one from Sonoda. Uh, one of my first tools from them, this is why I fell in love with them. This gets used all the time. These are flush cuts, and they also catch the head of the zip tie, whichever, or the head or the tail, whichever side you're cutting. It'll catch it so it doesn't go flying off somewhere, which can be super helpful when I'm working on some classic cars. I don't want the tail end of the zip tie scraps flying onto the header pipes or anything like that on a car and sitting there and melting, and I don't know what the heck's going on. Now we're working our way down into the bay here. And like I said, this is mostly like a working section for me. So this isn't like a tour. This is like what I do here. Uh, all right. So on the side, I've got some really long extensions. Uh, you can see how far down those go. Uh, let's see. This one's probably a two footer. And they ride there mostly because I have nowhere else to put them. I have smaller drawer toolboxes that don't have a spot for like super long extensions like this. Uh, they they work great right there. So I, I do got a set of one, two, three, four of those. And then I run these flex head ratchets. This is the gear wrench 90 tooth locking one. Really like that. Uh, I, I wish I had a little bit longer one. This one's pretty good. Um, use that quite a bit. And then this is kind of the same concept, but it's a non-locking uh, in any direction. It doesn't ratchet kind of dot, 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 dot. Yeah, and if I, did, if I show you that on this one, uh, you'll know what I mean. This one kind of has like, it like elbows into place or something, notches into place, and then you lock it. This one kind of has a smooth motion to it, which I really like in some instances. That one's really handy. Um, they ride there because they are some of my only ratchets that fit in these, uh, whereas my other ones kind of have comfort grips and stuff, so they ride in that big box which is only a couple steps away, so it's not all that inconvenient to just have more room. This is a breaker bar right here from hmm, Master Force. I think I had to buy this one on the side of the road uh, when I was, or buy it for a side of the road repair, but it's still there. And then I've got a ratcheting head breaker bar, which can be helpful depending on the situation you're in, ratcheting and reversible flex head too. It's more like a ratchet than it is a breaker bar. And then I've got this fork here for splitting some ball joints and stuff like that i just didn't have another spot for it at the time so i think that's why it's there i probably could find a better spot for it and put something better more more daily use there 
All right, so uh, this is how I this is how I use the tray or whatever you'd say the bay here. Whatever big tools I'm working with that day are going to go like right in here. Uh, if I'm working with 15 different sockets and 20 different ratchets and and 10 different uh, hand wrenches, this is where they're going to be. I don't have this as like a dedicated organization space, but what I tend to do is have my batteries lined up against one wall so that when I'm using my tool, I can just slap the battery on it and get going from there. On this side, I've got some screwdrivers and then I believe a really long, yes, I've got my long Mac tools, yes. Panel popper right there. That's a nice one to have. It's about a, two, I don't know, it's probably about a foot and a half. And this is one of my most used, well, this is the second one because my other one was the most used. This is one of my most used ratcheting screwdrivers or my most used screwdriver, honestly. I love this one from GearWrench and it's got interchangeable heads on it. So you can use a T-handle, you can use a different size extension in there. These are real awesome. I really like this ratcheting screwdriver from GearWrench. Probably one of my favorite screwdrivers in the bunch. These are some Cummins screwdrivers that I think came in a car or a toolbox that I bought. And I, I just drew on the top of them so I knew which one I was grabbing. They don't see a whole lot of use, but uh, I'll beat them up when I need to. This is a Vessel. Uh, I've covered one of their screwdrivers already. That's their golf ball style. This is a, what is this, a Megadora, I think, style uh, non-slip handle. This is one that I really like, and it's Japanese Industrial Standard, JIS size. Uh, tips. So if you're working on Japanese fasteners or Japanese cars, you kind of going to need a JIS screwdriver or a set of them. Here's the other gear wrench one. I told you the other one was my second one. And uh, this one you can definitely see has taken a beating, but it still keeps going. So I've got it right there. And these are gear wrench impact style screwdrivers. If the screw won't move, you put it on there and you whack this hard plate with a hammer and it's supposed to free up that screw. Got the same one in a Phillips head as well. Okay, into the drawers. The left drawer is my quarter inch metric and then my extensions. Uh, I use this quite a bit if I'm like on the inside of a car and then obviously my extensions are for, you know, hitting the impacts and ratchets and stuff like that. This is an impact driver adapter. You saw one of those up on the magnetic plate earlier. Uh, this is the whole kit down here. These are Makita's quarter inch impact sockets and they are so affordable that it was just made sense for me to have these sitting around even if they're backups these are impact locking extensions i told you about the locking extensions earlier this is the impact version real sweet to have around especially if you've ever had a socket fly off and damage anything that's when you're going to decide you should have had those really like that kit and this is just a whole bunch of random size and length type extensions and adapters in there and I really like Milwaukee squared sockets. Uh, some people give me, you know, flack about them saying they don't work for them or whatever. I like them and they don't roll around. That's my main, my main thing. Whenever I'm working, they just stay put because they're not circular. They won't just roll. And uh, another thing I really like about them is that you can put a box wrench or an open end wrench on the other side of them, which is real sweet. Uh, I've actually made an extension out of another socket before as well by putting it over the squared side and then you put, so you'd have one socket down, another socket there. Where's my nine? Where would my nine be? So this is my metric three eighths drawer. That was my metric quarter drawer. And this is the same Milwaukee style set with square sides. I love those. And then I've got a couple of my smaller ratchets up here that don't uh, take up too much room. This is my Milwaukee rotating head ratchet. It comes in a kit with some uh, with some sockets. Not all these sockets, but it does come in a kit. Three eighths. I use this one a lot. I love the rotating ratchet heads a ton. And so I've also got the gear wrench quarter inch version, which is real nice to have around. I've got the uh, gear wrench three eighths version in there, and then I've also got gear wrench. Was this the ninety two standard three eighths ratchet? And then some of the smaller ones, this is Milwaukee's Stubby that I modified with a pen grip. I took a grip off of a pen and put it on the end of that so you can get a little more torque on it or a little more grip, not necessarily torque. Uh, this is their quarter inch. This is a real nice one to have around when you can't quite get into certain spots. Uh, and then for another handy little ratchet, this is tiny. This is like a four inch ratchet. Rotating head, quarter inch, great for like 
dashboard work. Uh, this saves me a lot of time when I'm working on throttle bodies so I can get in between a whole bunch of the wiring and a whole bunch of the sensors without uh, having to take all that stuff off. This is the longer version, the seven inch version, which is great for when you need the more reach and more leverage. Quarter inch chrome, three eighths chrome, both metric. And then now you're gonna see, this is how I do with this drawer. Some people are gonna call me crazy. I have some random impacts and my universal impacts and then my adapters for impacts over here. These are low profile adapters, which I love, especially when you have limited amount of space. Uh, these work great. These I've used quite a bit, especially this one right here, the three eighths to a half. I put that on my Milwaukee stubby and then it doesn't take up a whole lot more space. And then I can run my half inch impacts, which are huge sometimes like a 36 on there. Uh, 36 millimeter I had to run the other day on that. So I have my longer pry bars back here. I tend to not need pry bars every day, so I don't I don't put them up there. I don't mind them here. This is how I do my impact sockets. I love the tray. Uh, I love the case, so I just leave them in it. I can grab it, walk over to my job, and then start using it like that without without having to transfer them from like a socket rail back into here. So I just leave them in here. It clears the drawer, and I love it. I really like Milwaukee's impact sockets because I like how big and bold the numbers are to see. Tell me what size this one is. What size is this? Okay, tell me what size that one is. Three quarter. Now you're imagine you're under a car trying to figure out what size this thing is. Yeah, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Ah, uh, giving up. It's a snap on though. So that's my three eighths impact drawer. And then sometimes this will be in here if I know I'm going to be using this a lot. Uh, depending on the day and the time, uh, that's that's sometimes right there. And then my bottom one, kind of the same concept, folks. Uh, this is my half-inch impacts in metric. You can see I like to have these just ready to grab and go. I like that way more than socket rails. And this drawer isn't deep enough to run a socket rail with some of those, like that 36 would be too big. And then I also have my Milwaukee half-inch high torque impact dude this thing will take off whatever you throw at it i think it has something like 1600 foot pounds of nut busting force and then i leave a battery my m18 battery to slap on there when i'm getting ready to use it i've also got my half inch gear wrench locking extensions down here because like i said if you're using high torque and high velocity sometimes things fly off if you've ever had a socket fly off of these things they can damage so that's why i got the locking ones instead of the regular extensions and then this is just an adapter that hides itself over there the bottom here is kind of a flex zone as well i'm in the middle of an engine teardown so some of the bigger stuff rides in here which would be the intake pipe the manifold the exhaust manifold the header starter uh some pulleys my fire extinguisher you should always have ones right there and my wheel chocks are right there and some bushing things that i had to burn out are right there so this this sometimes has oil pans in it it sometimes has fresh oil getting ready to go into the car in it just depends what i'm working on the big stuff goes down there for whatever i'm working on hope you enjoyed that tour subscribe don't forget to subscribe don't forget to subscribe don't forget to subscribe